Hi, welcome to this new learning series. This is designed to develop a quick understanding on 5G architecture and key principles. In this learning series, we will give you some high level overview on 5G technology. We will start with a brief history of telecommunications. Then we will understand that what are the needs to develop more advanced technologies like currently in 5G and in future 6G or 7G and so on. We will understand that what is the necessity and how 5G can be used in various applications. Then we will see the most important building blocks of the 5G radio access networks and 5G core networks, which plays the important role to fulfill the wide use cases of 5G. If you are already familiar with 4G technology and may be curious that what 5G comes with as an enhancement compared to the 4G technology or maybe you are already working with certain aspects of 5G but wanted to expand your understanding on the other aspects or other areas or if you are completely new to the telecom field and wanted to explore the telecom world no matter where you are on your learning journey we are here to take the next step together as we will explore the fundamental principles of 5G in this learning series. The purpose of this course is to deliver the concepts of important fundamentals and key principles which are evolved in 5G systems. We will also understand that what new techniques are introduced in 5G to cater the wide use cases of 5G. So let's get started. We will begin with a quick overview from the history of telecommunication. Because if you do not understand the past, you may not connect with the current evolutions and future demands. So it is important to understand, but we will not go in deep. So in the era of 1900, landline phones was common around the world. That was the first step in telecommunications. By 1930s, the first mobile phone was invented and that actually have wireless support. And that was the start of wireless domain, generally called as 0G. These mobile phones were using a very basic feature, that is push to talk. So the communication happened through a two-way radio connections between a network and a car-mounted trans receivers. At that time, we have huge transmission towers and they cover large areas. It is near around 20 miles in radius and that area was called mobile service areas. Frequency reuse concept also started to use at every 100 miles. But the key challenges was that service providers had to manually connect the calls to the regular phone networks. So operators have a lot of manual monitoring and they also manage the channels which are being used for communication. So it was another challenge. Those communications was started from 36 MHz band and it hardly have 10 to 30 channels only. Means those systems can only accommodate very few users. Now during 1970s and early 80s, the demand was increased and user had to wait for their turn to get the mobile services. And surprisingly, that waiting list which is up to 3 years of waiting period. And that shows the demand, that why we are needing the advanced wireless telecommunication systems. Now in 1980s, Bell Labs introduced AMPS, that is Advanced Mobile Phone Systems. This is also known as 1G or first generation of cellular telecommunication. This new technology allows simultaneous talking. So we moved from push to talk kind of system to the AMPS system. And that was a great improvement from the previous generation. 1G also introduced automatic channel selection. So things get easier for service providers. This innovation was the base of wireless communications and now more people can experience a true mobile communications. AMPS uses analog technology and it was using frequency division multiple access or FDMA. So each communication happens over a separate 30 kHz frequency channel. Now the another problem is bandwidth requirement because now more users are expected to use mobile services. So to fulfill that need, FCC allocate the frequency spectrum from 824 MHz to 894 MHz. So this bandwidth can accommodate around 666 channels. Another important advancement was in coverage area. Now because AMPS started to use hexagonal cells to serve the mobile service area or MSA instead of using one single cell to serve circular radius in previous technology. Also, those 666 available channels were distributed between 7 cells 
and each cell having its own set of channels. Now these 7 cells collectively using 666 channels and then frequency gets reused for additional set of seven cells. This concept was the origin of cellular communication. However, AMPS technology has many challenges like poor voice quality, short on battery life, bulky devices, unreliable handoffs and weak securities etc. So when the rollout of AMPS was started, just soon after that new innovations get started on digital cellular communications. And in 1987, 13 European countries agreed to create a common cellular telephone system across the Europe which refers to the GSM specifications from ETSI. And then GSM was commercially launched in Finland in 1991. GSM was using TDMA and FDMA based multiple access technologies. And because of this advancement, it allows more users to serve from the same resources. TDMA or time division multiple access is the concept where different users share the same frequency resource but at different time slots. Those digital systems also support new services like texting and even picture messaging although they were at the very low speeds. This was further evolved by introducing a new domain called as packet switch domain. This was an addition to the circuit switch domain which is sometimes referred to as 2.5G or ADS. This offered better services to the end users and now they can use it for more services like sending emails receiving emails etc. and even web browsing was possible at a speed of 64 kbps to 144 kbps. In 2008 or 2009 LTE was introduced and now it was a fully packet switch technology and that was the start of 4G. It is interesting to note that each generation of technology is sometimes referred by the name of radio access technology behind the generation. For example, 3G is known as WCDMA and 4G is called LTE and 5G is called New Radio NR. 4G supports the bandwidth from 1.4 MHz to 20 MHz. 4G uses OFDMA technology in the downlink and single carrier FDMA in the uplink. OFDMA is a multiple access technology where a wideband carrier is split into many narrowband subcarriers and they act as an individual channel. And because of that, we can have wideband data rates that offers high data rates and throughput. At the same time, we can also use the benefit of better propagation characteristics from narrowband channels. 4G offers good broadband data rates and because of that, it generally referred as the generation of mobile broadband. As an advancement in 4G, it also introduced different new concepts to even boost the data rate. For example, multi-antenna system and carrier aggregation techniques etc. It also enabled new services like high definition mobile TV streaming, mobile gaming etc. Now as technology evolved and new services offered, as a result more and more devices were started accessing the mobile internet and it is still growing in the present time as well. So to meet those growing demands and to cater such huge number of devices and users, we are needing more advancement and hence we are needing new generation of systems. And hence 5G standards started developing and it is still evolving. 5G supports up to 400 MHz of bandwidth and it is huge. 5G continue to use OFDMA based air interface. In this course we will be discussing majority of the key components that contributes in 5G. In the next session we will be talking about why 5G is needed and we will understand that why 4G is not enough to cater the future requirements and what are the 5G use cases. So stay tuned for the updates. If you did not subscribe till now, then please do subscribe to learn and grow community for regular updates. If this video is informative, then please like this video, comment on video and don't forget to share. Thank you for watching.